look, Rogue? Hey, ain't we a picture of combat fatigue? Gents, if we don't look like we need a week's leave in New Caledonia, we're in the wrong Navy. <laughs> Down, boy. Well, I'll tell you, I still don't think Binghamton's gonna buy it. He's got to buy it. We got 1,100 Yankee greenbacks invested in them war souvenirs. Either we get the new Caledonia and deliver the goods, or we look for a tall building to jump off of. <laughs> so let's go, you bunch of kooks. <laughs> Forward! Stagger! <laughs> Now, see here, Colonel Pryor, according to my copy of your itinerary, Rita Howard has a free day on Wednesday. Now, I just thought it would be nice if you could bring her whole show over here from New Caledonia and put it on here on our... Oh, you can't. You won't? I should do what? Now, look here, Colonel, that's no way to talk to a... Hello there, Colonel, that's no way to... Talk... Well, that gold braided pipsqueak. Do you mean, sir, he had the nerve to hang up on you? Hmm. It's a bitter pill to swallow, I'll tell you, Carpenter. You know, Admiral Rogers is a great admirer of Rita Howard's. Oh, and so am I, sir. I've seen all of her movies. And, sir, do you know she is built like... Here, here, here. What's the matter with you? I know what she's built like. Oh, this is a foul blow. Foul blow! Admiral Rogers needs a new chief of staff. I wanted to have him down here, see the show, and then we could discuss the appointment, but now, I don't know. Now you'll have to try for the job on merit. Yeah. Tough luck, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Don't you have any friends of your own? No. <laughs> Did you hear that? Rita Howard's in New Caledonia. Wow, what a dame. She's built like know, a... We know, we know, we know. Oh, boy, is that thing of your steaming. Boy, oh, boy, guys, this combat fatigue gag is out. I've just come up with an even better idea. What are you talking yeah, about? What gives, group? Christy, you got the best handwriting here, right? Yeah. Come on. We're gonna write our own ticket to New Caledonia. <laughs> and salute. <laughs> want me to give you a leave so you can go to New Caledonia? I know it's a little irregular going over the skipper's head like this, sir, but you see, it's a hardship case. The only hardship that you bandits will ever face is running out of rackets. Now get out of here. Out, 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 out! Yes, sir. Sorry, Christy. I guess you just have to write your cousin Rita in New Caledonia and tell her the family reunion is off. Well, I guess I can always see her in Hollywood after the war. And at least you know you tried. And a trooper like your cousin... Rita Howard knows the show must go on. Just a minute, you two. I, I, did, did you say his cousin, Rita Howard, the, the movie star? Oh, no, Captain. I didn't say that. Groove, you told him. You swore that you would. Forgive me, Chris. It slipped out of my mouth before I could stop it. Do you realize what my life on this base will be now? Guys will be wanting my autograph, my picture. Wait, guys will even be wanting to touch me. Yeah, see? Sorry, I deserve it. Come on, let's get out of here before you get me in any deep. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that this cut, this uh, golden-haired boy is a cousin to Rita Howard, the movie star? No, Captain, I didn't say that. <laughs> hey, Groove, my cousin's letter, it's gone. Oh, is this it? It's... Dear Cousin George, I'm so happy to know that we'll be seeing each other in New Caledonia. I can hardly wait to give you a big hug and a kiss from your little sister, Betty. Oh, please, sir, that's very personal. First of all, I've got a whole day off Wednesday to do anything my little heart desires. Christopher, my boy, <laughs> do you suppose that you could get her little heart to desire to come here to our little base and put on a little show? <laughs> come on, Chris, don't be so modest. You know she'd do anything for you. Yeah, but how can I ask her? 
Now that we can't get our leave. Who said anything about you, don't, did I? Carpenter, did you say anything about no? You say that, he said anything about no leave. Are you boys still here? Why aren't you packing? Go pack. We can't keep Cousin Rita waiting, can we? Pack, 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 pack. <laughs> Of all the lame brain stunts, hold it, you swabs. But it worked. It was a stroke of genius. A stroke of genius, you. Christy. Yes, sir. So, all of a sudden, you're a movie star's cousin, huh? Why didn't you go whole hog and, and make it rent tin tin? <laughs> we had to do something. If we don't get these souvenirs to New Caledonia, we'll go bankrupt. Yeah, I made a great deal with Sergeant Wojciechowski. He runs the airstrip control tower there. You know, he's given us three grand for that bunch of junk. And what do you think Binghamton will give you if Rita Howard doesn't show up? Yeah, he'll give you 30 days for insubordination and 60 days for false report and two years for being absent without leave. It's yes, condition red. Binghamton's gig. Oh, no. Oh, boy, hey, Fuji. I know. Hey, the father here. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, you come with me. Ah, Captain Binghamton, sir. What a coincidence. I was just on my way over to your base, sir. <laughs> Never mind the apple polishing, Mikhail. I brought your leave papers with me. Oh, and now, my boy, I might have a little surprise for you when you get back. It's like, say, another stripe on that arm. Ah, uh, now, no, no, wait a minute, Captain. Before uh, this goes any further, sir, about Miss Howard, sir, I you see? I know about Miss Howard, Miguel. It's no good to try and pretend like she is not Christopher's cousin. The cat is out of the bag. Oh. Oh, well, I'll try and find it for you, sir. It must be around here somewhere. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. kitty. <laughs> I'm going to kill him one of these days. Captain, Captain. what I meant, sir, was... I don't care what you meant, my boy. This is a red-letter day in my naval career. Just a little jumpy boy, you all right? Don't be nervous. Now, I've invited Admiral Rogers over here for the show Wednesday, and I want to tell you he was delighted. He was absolutely delighted. Admiral Rogers! Captain, you shouldn't have done that! I mean, uh, what was it? You see, uh, what was supposing Miss Howard didn't show up? Yeah, you know, people get laryngitis and broken legs. <laughs> Yes, and people also get broken necks, plus 60 days in the brig, and that's what you're going to get if Miss Howard doesn't come here and put on her show Wednesday for any reason whatsoever. Do you read me? Uh, loud and clear, Captain. Yes, sir. Well, uh, what are we stalling for? It's not polite to keep a lady waiting. Shove off. Get moving. Move out. Oh, my boy, don't hurt yourself. Cousin Rita would never forgive me if you hurt yourself. Oh, yes, yes. Don't hurt yourself. All right, come on. Let's go for it. Now that's worth fighting a war for. Humba, humba, humba. Miss Howard, on behalf of the brave men of Teratupa, the fight in this PT base in the South Pacific, we'd like to... All right, you guys, move on up. It's all right, Corporal. I'd like to talk to Sorry, you. Miss Howard. Colonel Pryor's orders. All right, come on, guys. Get on, move on. Move on. Go on, then. Give the boys a hand. I'm going to make a direct run. Go ahead. Right, skip. All right, you guys, hold that line. Like Admiral Dewey said, darn those torpedoes. Told you guys, you can't go in there. Yeah, well, well, now, he may be right. Dewey didn't say anything about bayonets, you guys. <laughs> Gee, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I hope the boys didn't upset you. Oh, not at all. In fact, you'd be surprised how much a thing like this can do for a girl's morale, Commander. Uh, McHale. Uh, Quint McHale, ma'am. I'm a skipper of the PT-73 out of Taratupa. Look, ma'am, I, I want to be on a level with you. You see... Uh, one of my guys told a whopper to our commanding officer about you being his cousin. Oh? And uh, he also promised that he'd have you on our base tomorrow. And frankly, if we don't deliver, we'll be fed to the sharks. Well, I certainly couldn't let a thing like that happen. So first, I'll have to clear it with the brass. And then... Oh, Colonel Pryor. This is Commander McHale from Taratupa. Uh, how do you do, sir? Commander? We were just discussing the possibility of bringing our show to his base tomorrow. I'm afraid that's hardly practical, Miss Howard, since we're flying out to Pearl Harbor tomorrow. I thought I made that perfectly clear to that pest, Binghamton. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Uh, but, Colonel, uh, Taratupa wouldn't be too far out of your way. Uh, maybe you could sit down, say, uh, for about an hour or so? Negative, McHale. <laughs> now, if you will, Miss Howard, the general is waiting. Sorry, Commander. I guess we can't fight the Pentagon. Bye, and good luck. Uh, bye, Miss Howard, and thanks for trying. <laughs> well, Skip, what do we do now? Yeah, if we show up without Rita, we're dead. All on account of that Fink Colonel. Yeah, he's another Binghamton. All right, all right, he's off, you guys. I'm trying to think. 
While you're thinking, Skip, we'll get this stuff over to the airstrip and deliver this junk to Wajahowski. At least that'll give us bribing money for the guards back at the bridge. Wajahowski! That's it! That's why. What then, Skip? Hey, Groove, didn't you say that Wajahowski was the control tower operator here? Right. That's how he gets the worldwide delivery for the trinkets. You see, he lays out the flight plans. <laughs> of course! Skip, you're beautiful. <laughs> hey, great idea, Skip! Yeah. All we do is get Woji to reroute Rita's plane to Taratupa. What we gotta do is to figure out a plan to get that colonel out of the action while we... Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> your Uncle Dudley's done it again. <laughs> Let's get this stuff over to the airstrip. Okay, everybody. Up and out. Got to evacuate the plane. Let's go. What are you doing here, Mikhail? And furthermore, what are we doing here? We had to make an emergency stop, Colonel. Welcome to our tuba, ma'am. What's the trouble, Commander? Epidemic on New Caledonia, ma'am. Yes, sir. They discovered it right after you left. <laughs> so bad. Uh, isn't that right, Doctor? Doctor! Oh, yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why the Grand Cookberry fever struck. Let's move out. Cookberry fever? Yes, oh, well, uh, yes, that's right. It, uh, the scourge of the Solomons. Why, the last time it hit, it wiped out thousands, millions, thousands. Uh, I didn't think it was a million. No, right, all right. Come on, let's move out. I'd like to say maybe your own. Just a second. Now, who the devil are you? Dr. Parker, your service, sir. MD, DM, BBC, AM, and FM. Now, look here, doctor, whatever your name is, we are not budging. I'm sorry, folks. Come again. Hey, you go, fellas. Come on. Here you go. They're expecting us at Pearl Harbor in just a few hours. <laughs> no talking. Think that thermometer was in long enough, Doctor? Uh, <clears throat> oh, yes, yes. It's the uh, latest thing, instant mercury. <laughs> Marvel. Oh, thank heaven. <laughs> that you're all right. <laughs> yes, my fans would never forgive me if I died. <laughs> oh, cocaberry fever, instant mercury. Hey, you mean you knew it all the time? <laughs> and you're not sore? You'll put on your act for us? Well, I'll never be able to top your act, but let's get the show on the road. Let's get it on the road! <laughs> Welcome to Taratupa, Miss Howard. It's the fighting as PT base in the South Pacific. Well, thank you, Captain. Captain Binghamton, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, but my friends call me Wally. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, Miss Howard, uh, may I present to Admiral Rogers? Only kind of you to stop off here, Miss Howard. I don't see how I could have passed it up. <laughs> She'd do anything for me, Admiral. Anything. For me. Oh, and, and Cousin George. Cousin George? I want to tell you, Miss Howard, this is a fine boy. He's almost like a son to me this morning. Well, I'm sure the whole family would be delighted to hear he's being so well taken care of, Captain. Dear Cousin George. <laughs> family reunions always affect them this way. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, how's Aunt Julie's? I mean, uh, Uncle Clary's. Uh, well, it sounds like showtime. <laughs> yes, gentlemen. Can't keep the troops waiting. Uh, I'd better change. Oh, I'll show you where, ma'am. Right this way. Oh, good, good, good. Hi, uh, Admiral. Uh, shall we take our seats, sir? Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to tell you, a man with your background, you ought to be at least a chief petty officer, son. <laughs> you can't keep me here. My plane is due in Pearl Harbor at 2400. Sorry, sir. Doctor's orders, you can't leave until he makes a thorough examination. Oh, sorry, sir. Can't have you spreading kookaberry bugs all over the Pacific. Oh, oh, this is the most out. Here's the doctor now. <laughs> Well, 
be too sterile, you know, around the hospital. <laughs> Gloves. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you never use them in combat anyway. <laughs> no, no. Take a look here. Pardon me, boy. Now, where does it hurt? Where does what hurt? I never felt better in my life. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> Classic symptom, no pain. <laughs> well, now, we're just going to take a look here. Give me a light, please. You'll just lie forward. Face just straight up, please. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Excuse me, Constable. Well, the way I see it, it's uh, definitely a marked inflammation of the anterior interior. If I'm not mistaken, it's a hallucination of the central migraine area. And a swelling in the lower epiglottis. Eddie's yeah. such a young man. Will you stop mumbling and telling me what this is all about? Easy, easy now, Colonel. Mayo Clinic wasn't built in a, a day. And I'll tell you something about your career in the... Easy, please. Don't yell. I have a headache. <laughs> Aspirin, please. <laughs> Yes, I will let him up. <laughs> Mikhail? What kind of doctor is this man? I've never seen such ridiculous medical procedure in my life. Oh, uh, uh, oh well, Colonel, you're probably used to army doctors, sir. Uh, Dr. Parker here happens to be one of the finest medics in the Navy, sir. I don't care what he is. He's not laying another hand on me. The Pentagon will hear of this. Now, where's Miss Howard? And where's our plane? And where are my clothes? <laughs> Guys, guys, come here. We gotta keep him here until I can hustle everyone back onto that plane. Forgive us. <laughs> we can't do this. He's a colonel. Why, what do you want us to try? You can try anything you want. After all, you're the doctor, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Just keep him in that dressing room. See you later, boys. Yeah, well, I'm the doctor. Miss <laughs> 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 Howard, Miss Howard's wonderful. I loved your shoe shoe. It was marvelous. Oh, thank you, Captain. <laughs> it was awfully kind of you to perform for us, Miss Howard. We're certainly indebted to you and Colonel Pryor. Uh, uh, Colonel Pryor, well, he, he didn't have anything to do with it, Admiral. Isn't that right, Cousin George? Uh, Cousin Reed, I mean, if, if anybody deserves the credit... By the way, where is the girl? I thought I heard one of the musicians say he's at the base hospital, sir. Base hospital? Well, Binghamton, maybe you'd better get over there and see if there's anything wrong. Oh, well, I don't think that's necessary, Admiral. No, no, I don't think that's necessary either, Admiral. In fact, I was planning on escorting Rita, uh, Miss Howard, to the officer's club. Show her a little sample of Terra Tupa hospitality. <laughs> well, I will attend to that little chore myself. <laughs> Meanwhile, you set your course with the hospital and see what's wrong with the colonel. <laughs> oh, is it? Aye, aye, sir. Wipe that smile off your face. <laughs> Skip, 
they're heading for the hospital. What? Hey, Cap! Don't! Cap, make it that damn good! Get in here! Come on! Get in here! Dr. Schweitzer, we meet again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Schweitzer, yeah. Well, I get back to the boys in the hut, yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Oh, oh Captain, 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 there's a very simple an explanation for all this, yes, sir. In the name of the United States Army, I demand you open this door. <laughs> Who is that in there? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Colonel Pryor. And you're Captain Bingham tonight, take it. Well, I'm glad we had a chance to meet. Before I personally report you to the Secretary of the Navy! Why would you report me? You broke the door. <laughs> I'm wise to your little scheme, Binghamton. Posing this imbecile as a doctor and locking me up so you could put on that show. You ran just as deep as we are now, sir. How dare you? How oh, what the hell? No. How dare you suggest that this imbecile is not a doctor? He's one of the top men in his field. Top man. Look at this equipment. Ever see anything like that? Come off it! This imposter doesn't know his eyeball from his elbow. And where the devil are my pants? Well, now, wait a minute. I resent that. Oh, shut up. I mean, uh, I'll handle this, doctor. I'll handle this. Now, look here, Colonel. Look here. I can personally testify to the ability of this ensign, of this doctor, uh, Parker. Uh, that's right, sir. Well, the, the captain's a regular patient of this doctor all the time. Yes, oh, well, sir. yes, sir. Absolutely, yes, sir. Of course, he's a bit of neurotic, but what do you expect him a hypochondriac? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Right. Come right over here, sir. Sit right down here, sir. He always imagined something wrong with him. Like yes, sir. Just that's it. Well, we really got something this time. The primary whiplash, the secondary two sherry. <clears throat> Splint! <laughs> Boss! God! Nonsense! Nonsense! <laughs> hey, Skip, it's Admiral Rogers. He's heading this way. Admiral oh, Rogers is coming here? Good! Then I can press my charges to him directly. Oh, uh, Chuck! Chuck! Can't be too sterile, sir. Well, what's going on here, Binghamton? I was told you were having a little trouble. Hey, I don't know. Oh, I don't, no, no trouble, sir. Well, whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> sir, Colonel Pryor at your service. I have a long list of serious charges to file against these men. For open as they try to pass off this nitwit Parker as a doctor. Is that a fact, sir? Well, Colonel, I'll have you know that Dr. Parker here is one of the finest young medics in my command. I wouldn't think of having anyone else touch my ulcer. You wouldn't? Colonel, I'll give you exactly ten seconds to change your mind and head for that plane. Or so help me. By the time it takes you to get there, you'll be a buck private. <laughs> yes, sir. And put on your pants. You'll have a uniform. Uh, uh, Colonel, uh, before you start uh, pressing any charges, Colonel, I want you to know I had nothing to do with this. Oh? Sir. Well, then, Mikhail, I guess you have to take all the credit. Hello, uh, me, sir? Certainly. <laughs> I have been practically hysterical ever since Miss Howard told me the story. <laughs> it's about time someone put that pompous colonel in his place. Well done, Commander. Your plan was sheer genius. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> Bye-bye, Admiral. I think I'm going to be sick. Oh, well, now, don't you worry about a thing, Wally. It's your doctor. Ah, well, well, we've got a house call to make. Now, let's go. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you.